Hi, this is Rachel, and welcome back to my channel. I'm trying something new, and as one of my goals in 2021 is to read books closer to their published date, I've decided that any book that I read that is within a year of when it was published, I would like to do a video review. And I'm playing with my parents' Logic Tech camera at the moment as well. Who knows if that stays in this video though. Anyways, so today I would like to talk about The Emperor's Wolves by Michelle Seguera. Michelle Seguera writes one of my favorite fantasy series, which is, I don't remember off the top of my head, what it's actually officially called. Because I don't plan these things out, you know me. I just get started and go. Okay, so this is a spinoff series. So this author, Michelle Seguera, writes one of my favorite fantasy series. And it's an ongoing series as she's still writing it. And that is the Chronicles of Elantra series. And it starts with Cast in Shadow. And now that series, you follow Kayla Nea, who is the chosen one. And she's the chosen one because she has Mark's honor and she's part of an investigative team or her job is to investigate crimes. This book is a spinoff from that series and it follows one of the characters that you meet in that first book named Severn Handred. Now, Kaylin and Severn grew up together as children and then had a falling out as children. And the first book in Kaylin's series, The Cast in Shadow, I would suggest reading that one first before picking up this one. Because I think to find out why they had that falling out, it's better coming from her perspective and how she's dealing with it. And then after that, I would read this. So after that, I would then read this because it talks about it from his perspective. So since I, I think the Chronicles of Elantra series is like 14, 15 books, and this is going to be the Wolves of Elantra because before Kaylin and Severn reunite, she, they both are working in the Halls of Law is what they're called. And she doesn't know this, that he's there. Because she's in the investigative branch, which, which is called the Hawks. And he is in the side, they call them the assassin side or executioner side, called the Wolves. And their job is to go out and find the criminals who are evading the Hawks. You know, So they're more focused on what they do. Whereas the Hawks generally are investigating crime. The Wolves go after the high profile ones that the Hawks cannot get. So we're following Severin as he's being recruited to the wolves in this book. And there are so many Easter eggs for the other series. There's different things that are happening. And I'm like, Oh, I have to go back and I read the other series to remember how everything falls into place. And I'm, I love that because like I said, this is one of my, favorite or she, she's writing one of my favorite fantasy stories even if it does have the trope of the chosen one it's not an awful you know the way she handles it is really good because it's a chosen one who's like I don't want to be chosen and I have no clue what I'm doing so this is my second year using G of Red Book Roast she uses what she calls the call pile system and I've downloaded her spreadsheet and I've been using it I started using it last year and I really like that I really like this system because it looks at some different categories in order to determine the rating of the book. It looks at characters, atmosphere, writing, plot, intrigue, logic, and enjoyment. So for this book, for characters, and each of those rating, she has, I'm just going to link her video of how everything's explained because you give it a rating for each category like 1 through 10 and then it 
does the math to give you like the Goodreads rating. That'd be like one through five kind of thing. So I'm going to, if you're interested in her system, I'm going to link her down below in the description and go check that out. She does, she does these spreadsheets for free for people and it's a nice way to be able to keep track of your stats as well. Anyway, so for this book, for characters, I gave it a nine. In the Kaylin series, you're in Kaylin, you're following Kaylin's perspective. You're not in her head. It's not a first person uh, experience, but you don't get to see inside anybody else's point of view. And this one, you do get to see other points of view besides Severin. I like how Michelle Segarra did that. How it, it gives it a different flavor to the books and a different style. And it was fun to get to see the different perspectives and things that are going on behind the scenes. Whereas when Kaylin's books, if she's not in the room and part of the conversation, you don't know anything about what ha happened unless someone tells her. And this one, we get to kind of see more other people talking about. Most of the time, it's still related to Severin. But we weren't... You, you still get a... It still leaves him a little bit more mysterious. And I hope that she kind of continues that. Now, like I said, I gave the characters ni a 9 out of 10. It wasn't a perfect execution because at some times... You follow three male perspectives, and at sometimes I had to go back and go, wait, whose perspective am I in? Because they were very close. It was Severn, Helmet, who's the Wolf Lord, and Alluvian, who is the Barani, Barani, I'm not sure how you say that, who trains all and finds all the candidates of the wolves. And the Wolf Lord, or Helmet, and Alluvian, their their perspectives were just too close, and I sometimes had trouble differentiating them. But for me, that was minor because you, it, it didn't have to go too far back to figure out who it was. Um, but it still, there was some confusion there, which is why I can't give it a, you know, excellent nailed it. There, there was these issues. Now for atmosphere, I gave it an eight out of ten. And that's because even while I really like it, her books are very much like you're in the heads. And so I had a hard time feeling like the ambiance of where Elantra is. And I'm reading the other series. I'm familiar with Elantra, but there wasn't a lot of description of how things were. I don't, to me anyway, for writing, I gave it an eight out of 10. Again, I really enjoy her writing, but there were some things that I picked up that I was confused on. In this world, there are some immortals and mortal. There are different races who have eye color changes that denote the emotions. And so that's how people are like, oh, this guy's pissed off because his eyes changed to this color. This person is happy because of this color. And from what I could remember from the other series, one race, the Barani, the blue, different shades of blue, it's bad. If you see green, that means they're happy, and that's a very rare color you see. But she mentioned a couple times having a gold color in their eyes, and I don't remember from the other series ever seeing that. And so I was wondering if it was a mistake or if it was on purpose and I just wasn't remembering. But it was those things... Because I was like, wait, I don't remember that being a thing. It would throw me out of the story. So I gave the writing an 8 out of 10. For plot, I gave it a 9 out of 10. The plot does keep moving. It's fast-paced. You're getting into... This, this book jumps into the meat of issues of what is happening. And again, that's why I say, please go read the other series. Or at least the other... Uh, cast in shadow before you try to read this one because there's just so much that's going on in this one that pertains to the other series or later will set you up for what comes in the other series for intrigue i did give it a 10 out of 10 because i was hooked i was left at the 
seat, like, you know, edge of my seat going, what's going to happen next? How is this going to happen? For logic, I gave it a 9 out of 10. There were a couple things where I, I thought that how somebody reacted, it, it didn't make sense to me. It, it felt off, but, you know, that was probably just me. It, but it was still really well done, and it wasn't enough to break me from the book. And then for enjoyment, I gave it a 10 out of 10, because I I guess this book is actually over 500 pages, and I, so that's considered a tome by most people, and I read this in a couple days. So it was a book that I greatly enjoyed, because I didn't want to put it down, ever. Um, so that rating all worked out to be, for like Goodreads and Storygraph, a 5 for me. And I do suggest that you guys go out and read this book. And I forgot to say that this book was published in October 2020, so it's still within a year. I, you know, I'm reading more currently. Yay! I'm going good on my goal. Thank you, and you all have a great day.